Let's do a clean clap. Clean clap. Hi, it's me, DJ Clean Clap, here on the number one countdown show, Expertise Masters, where people who are an expert in their field come on and we see how much they know about the thing that they know about competing against other experts. We have a shoe expert, Danny Torterman. We have a, uh, a shell expert, that's shells from the sea, Dorvin Gump. Okay, that's yes. what this is. Hi, welcome to the podcast. It's me. <sighs> why, what, I, why, why am I breathing? Hi, it's me. Hi, it's me, Jorvin. Hi, it's me, Jackie Jackson. Hi, it's me, uh, Carolyn, Carolyn uh, Screech House. The problem, with, the problem with me and names now is a lot of times I will use a, re a real one. I'll use a real one. I'll use like an accidental real one I know, and it's a person who's just like a someone's mom I knew from like fifth grade or something like that. It's like, oh, now I just said their person's name. And yeah, the naming thing's getting harder as time goes on, coming up with fake names. Also, I think it's just practice. I need to practice more. I need to practice my, my fake name. Should I also have a shot that's a, that's a profile shot? That would be cool. Nobody does profile. I'll give you a profile. A lot of people don't notice, know this about themselves, but they have a good profile. Some people never know. Like if you were living in the wild, you would never know your profile. You wouldn't know it. You would never be aware of your profile. But a profile is like, I mean, that's, that's uh, it's half of who you are. It's one quarter, one eighth. It's an angle. It's, how about this? It's one of 360. Right, so it's one, but it's it's a huge piece. I would say it's more like about um, I would say it's about ninety percent of three hundred and sixty. So I would say what's ninety percent of whatever the f who cares? It doesn't matter. You don't care, so I don't care. Either way, show your profile. I'm gonna get a profile cam in here. I want I want to do everything. I want to paint this this fabric black here. If you're, if you're just listening, jokes on you. Okay. This is the podcast. This is live to tape. This is also known as uh, Daddy's Big Red Truck. It's a large truck. It's an older truck. It has a steel bumper, uh, so that's good. It's not easy to scratch. It's it's more expensive to repair, but it's less likely to be damaged. Wouldn't you say that's what you want? Harder to repair, but harder to damage. Would you want easier to damage, easier to repair? Some people might say yes. I'm an I'm gonna no on that. I'm gonna I prefer harder, much harder to damage, and maybe even, if it is damaged, the damage looks good. On something that's hard, on something that's hard to repair, the damage looks good. But something, see, I'm trying to, I'm trying to engage, I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to engage this with the human psyche. Does this relate to the human psyche? Psyche? I don't think it does. I don't think that does. Because if you said it's harder to repair someone, well, but maybe physically, no, nope, it's not working. Not every analogy crosses over to the human plateau. But either way, uh, that's what Daddy's Big Red Truck is. It's hard to damage, and it looks good in disrepair. It looks sick. It looks like a fucking cool scar. I'm cursing too much. I'm about to drink a 12-ounce can of Guru Energy Drink. We are not sponsored. We have no sponsors at all. Spon sponsors at all. We have none sponsors. I've literally never had a, actually had a sponsor once many years ago. Many many years ago. Uh, someday this will be sponsored, and I'll have to be the guy who has sponsors. But anytime I have a product, it's not. It's just because I have the product. But Guru Ener Guru Energy Drink. I turned some people onto it when I was making that movie in Florida, and they were they liked the taste. It's a great taste. It's a stunning taste. Obviously, Red Bull is the ultimate taste of all time in human life. If you don't like the taste of Red Bull, then you don't have a good taste. If you, if you hate the taste of Red Bull, that means you like the taste of Red Bull. It's like that. It has a thing. It, ha it, it turns heads. It turns mouths. But Guru is not that way. Guru is like, like a fruit punch. It's really just enjoyable. That's the problem with Guru. It's so easy to suck down. I'm not, if I, I have to dump out half of it. I have to dump it in the fucking, in the gutter. Not even on the sink, because I'll open up the pipes and get it out. You have to dump it in the gutter where there's cigarette butts and shit and mice feck. 
Mike Feckus to uh, keep from guzzling the rest of it because you will not sleep. Some of these energy drinks, you don't get high off them. They just prevent the ability to sleep later, which I think is a bad thing. It's a bad thing. Yeah, definitely. But this is Daddy's Big Red Truck. It's the executive buffet. It's on the mezzanine level. It's technically the third floor, but the ceilings are so high. Actually, you know, I'm not even sure. I think it's technically the second floor, but it feels like it's the height of the third floor. It's a downtown hotel. There's lots of glass installations, cool places. You could take a nap on carpet that's been cleaned uh, quite regularly with an industrial type of machine that has like a beater on it. You know what a beater is? If you get into vacuum talk at all, you'll know what a beater is. You'll know. You'll know what a beater is when you get it. When you get it. Okay, my guest today, immensely talented comedian and actress. I love her. She's been on the podcast a bunch of times, hasn't she? At least once before. Maybe twice before? Either way, so, so, so funny. I love everything she's ever made. She's just like, <sighs> direct line, direct line to the funny person, the funny thing, the things that I laugh at. Love everything she does. Alyssa Lynn Paris is here. Alyssa Lynn Paris. I think you can check out her stuff. Um... God, I want to say her website, right? It's Alyssa Limp. If you look it up, A-L-Y-S-S-A-L-I-M-P-E-R-I-S, you will find all you need to find with Alyssa Limp Paris. That wasn't me. <laughs> it probably was. <laughs> Not go for probably two months. That's like if you went to any store and they're like, you know, you can buy more things from us yeah. if you want to. <laughs> you can buy more expensive products I'm from like, us. I'm like, no, I haven't bought stuff in a while. Uh, I should go. I yeah. went for the first time in probably like six months their day. And is this the same person or like same a Same person. See, so what am I doing? But he knows, he knows, he's tried to nail me down. But no, they can't. They can't hold us down. Yeah. They can't. Oh, you know what gets me is the mm. whole submitting it to the insurance. Do you, sub, do you submit to the insurance? Well, the other day I was with my friend and she said something along the lines of like, you know, insurance is they just they just bet on dumb people not submitting invoices. And they I'm, definitely and do. I'm standing there going, that's you. Sub- that's me. I'm dumb. Oh my god! And guess how? Guess what? There's a you can't submit stuff over two years old. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Cooked. It is the kind of thing that is. What? Oh, it's so I feel like annoying. all I ever talk about here is things that bother me. Yeah. That are like, That's... The, I, 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 you know what I do though to pay them back? Please. When I, I um, call up the Beacon Health Options sure. people and I make them walk oh. me through like a fucking idiot baby through each claim and tell me exactly what to put in. I, it takes like 20 minutes. It's like, if I'm going to do this, you're doing it every step of the way with I me like on that. the phone. Okay, see, maybe that would help me if I did yeah. that. Because, yeah, the idea of kind of like even where... I, yeah. Because you get, I think, 80% of your... Oh, my God. It's... it's Yeah. Uh, I only found out from someone else. So this is how... They don't tell you. No, they don't they tell, tell you that they, they pay for it. It's word of mouth. <gasps> it's how, do, how do we let you know that, that uh, insurance pays for part of your therapy even out of network? Word of mouth. Word of mouth. <laughs> word of mouth. You know what it is, too? We were probably so fucked up when we first went to therapy. There's like, I wasn't going to be submitting anything. Yeah. And so they, they bet on the people that are going are kind of so disorganized. Also, it used to be where you didn't have to fill out a form. You just sent in uh, to some email. or you, oh, you uploaded the super bill. Yeah. Now you have to fucking do stuff. You have to click uh, F1.4.1 diagnosis code. Uh, the date you have to put data. You have no, to do like fucking data, data entry. entry. Uh, no, they know. They, they know. know. They know who they're dealing they with. Know. They know that even me, I'm gonna leave here and go forget it. It's, forget it. It's the gift card industry too. It's, it's the a, thing yep. where it's like, like oh, they're not they're not gonna use that shit. You know what else? I got a gift card to Air One. Have you mm. ever gotten a gift card Guess to Air what? One? I've never been to Air One. Is that right? Yeah, I'm trying to gonna try to keep it that way now. I think that's. Smart. I feel like it's like it's a good look for me to have never been. Yeah, it's gonna be like I don't. Yeah. Feels like I don't go. You know, even though I'm kind of bougie like that, I still. Uh, there's never never been. It's been. on the wrong side of town for me. Yeah, so I've never been. 
Oh, they'll come to you. They're coming. I feel like the air ones are popping up all they'll over. Pop in my fucking backyard. Yeah, they'll pop yeah. up there. Haley Bieber with her smoothie just in your kitchen. I It'll can happen. make that smoothie better. Is I make I make really? a good smoothie. Oh yeah. Yeah, expensive. Yeah. So then, yeah. So you you would right. lo- you would love Air One. You should go anyway. Super bougie. And, you got a gift card. I got a gift card. I went in and I was like, oh, I'm actually paying with a gift card. And they were like, <laughs> okay, she has a gift card. She has a gift card. They took out a binder. They took out a binder that they had to then write down what it stopped the lineup all everyone's kind of looking at me i think i probably have like 25 dollars still left on that gift card i'm like never will you catch me using Ooh, it again my god that's how they do it they make it they make you feel like like you're on the dole yes like you're uh, yes. trying to cash in your social security <laughs> exactly. check to get some almonds yes. from like that were grown in a lady's a white lady's backyard exactly <laughs> yeah yeah christ yeah so i'm not i'm not i'm not i gotta submit claims though yeah, you got to do it. I haven't done it in a while. It's a nice flavor. Is that coconut pineapple? You want one? How did you know? You could smell it? <laughs> yeah. No, I could see it. Is, I could see it. I think that these are, oh, you can see it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but the ombre of the, the yeah. two colors coming together, God. It ew. is, it's kind of uh, amazing. It's also, I, I think totally. a lot of people probably hate it. Why? A lot of people hate coconut, you know that? They, yeah. Which is, coconut's which is a big, um, you know what, the, you ever had the limoncello? Love the limoncello. See, I like I like things that are creamy. I Me like, too. Like, a creamy orange thing. cream. Have you had the orange cream bubbly? It's got in there. God we damn! I shouldn't have said flat. I didn't know you were. Pl- I didn't know it was like that. Say some stuff. Okay, okay. I'm so, I'll tell you what. Promote. I'll promote the bubbly. If you are in a store, I think a Target, and you have eyes on orange cream, get as many as you can. That thing is like a cream skull. Remember when you were a kid and you would go to the ice cream man, the ice cream man? Which, by the way, how fun was that? Wasn't that youth where you would be in your bedroom and go, I hear it, I hear it, and then the music would stop, <gasps> and they're doing ombre too. Yep. Anyway. I, I got these at the grocery outlet. Grocery outlet, bargain, bargain market. market. I think, are ice cream trucks, like, you know, I know there's still a thing in New York, but in in the burbs, is that still a thing, you think? Yeah, where you have one. You have one. Yeah, it's kind of creepy looking, though. It's like a, it's yeah. like a Ford Econoline van. And they play some sort of weird song. It sounds like Stravinsky or some shit. It's like a oh, weird. That's good. Yeah. Stravinsky. You know, it sounds kind of a no. not the most happy song ever. Oh, it sounds right. like a, yes, yes. It's kind of a, a minor Daunting. key, um, some sort of you know Dini, instrumental Dini. Or, orchestral song. Mm. But it's on the ding, dun, 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 ding, dun, dun. right, right. And they play that, and it's just a kind of line van. It's kind of been rigged to be an ice cream truck. But right. It's, it's in our neighborhood. This is wow. Burbank, though. So Burbank that's is nice. Like, Burbank is the Burbs, but yeah. it's not the Burbs. It's right. like the Burbs in the city. Yeah, no, but that's yeah. nice. I miss them. I think that'd be fun. Fun for adults. I fun if they had them with pizza. I think I've only been to an ice cream truck like three times. As a kid? Yeah, we didn't have them when I grew up. Mm. Because ah. it was like, you know, people lived in the woods and stuff. It wasn't like a... Right, you were too far in the Burbs. Yeah, I didn't live in like an... Or I lived you were in the a sticks. A small town, basically. Mm. I was in a small town, too. And I remember they wouldn't always cross our street, but they'd go on the main street. So if you heard it from a distance... Right, you got to run. You start running. Yeah. Was yeah. This, that's the East Coast, or you grew East up in Coast. Jersey? No, but close. That's It's a similar New York? accent. No. I grew up Delaware. In <laughs> Rhode Island. <laughs> close, yeah. Yeah, so I grew up in Seekonk, Massachusetts, which is basically Mass. on the border Massachusetts, of Mass. Massachusetts. But it's very close to Rhode Island. That's where my mom's from. Okay. So that accent that I do is Rhode Island. Is it, though? But the, it's on the border. So like this right here, that's pretty Rhode Island. That's right. pretty, you're coming down here. No, no, that's a little Boston. You're coming down here for Rhode Island. Are you Boston, there's a difference? Boston, you're coming up here a little bit. Yeah, kid, you're coming up here. You're going to be a little bit up here. So it's a higher register or is the uh, mouth is tighter? I think the mouth is a little bit tighter. It's a little bit up. It's a little bit up. Whereas yeah. Rhode Island, it's like, yeah, we're going to Rhode Island. We're going to the beaches. So if you t- kept going with Rhode Island, where does it end up? Connecticut. Like, what's Connecticut? Hi, how are you? I am, no <laughs> we accent? have a golf club. No, it, like I don't know what happens on... Um, that drive. I think it's uh, but money. It's just money it's comes tons in. tons and tons. Because it's kind of, kind of super rich, right? I think so. Like and then you just, the accents go. And then you get to New York and it's, hey, what are you doing? Because this back. is all north of New York. Uh, now Connect, that Connecticut's north of New York. Rhode Island's north of New York. Or Jersey. Seacock is, is New right, Jersey. Right, 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 right. Seacock is, and then it's like. Uh, I don't know. New Bed, yeah. Then Rhode Island. But in my head, it's. It's not north, but it is. Yeah, and then Mass, and then... Boston's north of New York, right? Is it? You know when, like, Kimmel has those 
videos that are like these Americans. Are, yeah, that's I would fail all the like. Even if you, you ask me this, I'm like North is up. I think we're over. I what can't, if you yeah. saw a blank map of the United States? Could, how many states could you t- pick out? Few, few. Like how many? <laughs> <laughs> I would get California. I'd okay. get Texas. I'd get Washington. Right. I would get Florida. Okay. And I would probably go. Uh, would you get Oregon? Portland, Oregon. But you Oregon. know, yeah, you know, yeah. You know where Oregon is, right? Yeah, that's where my boyfriend's from. So okay. I've I've been there. So that would go. It would go Washington, Oregon, California. Yeah. Hey, come on, come on. Okay. How about that, Mister? Uh, whatever. I showed a map to my wife the other day. Mm-hmm. You know, we've been together a long time, and we've she's been back to Minnesota with me, ten times. Yeah. Knows where Minnesota is, and I was showing her the map, and she got Minnesota wrong three times. <laughs> I, I truly I, couldn't believe. I was like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, because like, because it's how like, do you not know this? You know, I think that woman. We've got a lot on our minds. We, we're doing do. a lot. We're handling a lot. We're juggling a lot. We're going. Once Google Maps came into the picture, we said, "Boop." We don't need to know that, yeah. and we you just offloaded dro- it. We offloaded it. That's we so smart. It. I mean, I wasn't the wars. The, the, the whole empire, you know, when there was that thing going around about how often do men talk about the... the Roman Empire, yeah. We said, it's, what is gone? Bygones be bygones. It's we gone. We don't have the time for the Roman Empire. Those political yeah. lines... I don't think about the Roman Empire at all. Good. I don't know what I think, what my thing is, but it's definitely not the Roman Empire. No, yeah. I don't know what mine is either. That's crazy about... Because I can't believe that she didn't... Um, that she didn't... I mean, I was more impressed that she didn't know. Yes. Like, I was impressed that, like, I feel burdened by that knowledge. Like, I know all the capitals. You know all the capitals? Yeah. I don't think I even know... Well, yeah, all the capitals is very impressive. Right. What is that? Rados, are you editing? I can hear you through the headphones. (laughs) (laughs) Live moment. See, that's what this is, guys. You get a little taste of behind the scenes. We got editing. Right here, we're, we're recording. Outside, people are driving. There's a lot, you know. Everything people are, is. People are driving. People are driving. It's so. It's busy. This is Hollywood. This is what you sign up for. You the got, driving is insane. It's insane. Yeah. At, when I was on my way over here, I'm like, I'm really grateful. I'm glad to be here, but I'm like, I'm really grateful that the pandemic like shifted live meeting. Remember when you used to have meetings and auditions all the time yeah. in person? I mean, I know yeah. there's benefits to it, but I just had that feeling of like when you were like going to be late to a meeting and oh. then you had to find parking. I'm like, we don't really have that anymore. You just kind of... You don't. I guess so. On. I've done a couple in-person auditions, but I mean, only... Yeah, but that's... No, only that's, this is a few. This I, is a, when I say a couple, it, I mean like two or three. Yeah. Yeah. That's usually what a couple means. Yeah. Yeah. That's not very many. Now, you were in... Oh, I feel like the last time I was here, were you filming the show that just came out? I think I finished filming. Out? It's been that long. Wow. Because uh, we were... We finished it in like February of 23. And so yep. I think I saw you. Oh, actually, maybe it was in the middle of it. I don't remember now. Yeah. It may have been in the middle of it. I don't know. Because we had a couple breaks, like yes. a month long break where I was Oh, home. yes, 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 yes. I yes. might have been on like a kick where I'm like, I'm going to do, I'm going to, you know, get her done. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure what it was, though. The promo was really cool. Were you excited to be driving around town and seeing? Yeah, such it was cool. cool it's very cool. It's like, also, it, just, it took so fucking long. Yeah. Anytime something takes forever. I like, know. Finally, they. They did it. I know. It's n- Yeah, it's a long process yeah. from start to... It's the longest. Yeah. Especially with all the, the strikes. Mm-hmm. The strikes. We've had a lot of, st- we've had a lot of sort of stop and mm-hmm. goes, so... And these companies. Yeah. These companies are they're fucking us over and everything. Yeah. One of the red. Oh, wow. See? The lights. problem is they only, show, they only show up. They only show up. That I haven't figured it out yet. We're still in the building phase here. <laughs> Ideally, I want to have about 12 mismatched lamps here. I like that. With various colors and stuff, and maybe, like, there's a lot There's a lot that can still happen. No, but this is, this is, you got the great drinks. Now, what are the tickets for? Is that sort of a... It's just sort of there. I don't know why. Movies. It's kind of to evoke, yeah. like, oh, we're going to be talking actors. It's kind of like, oh, you, you want to go to the high school football <laughs> game? Here you go. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yes, yeah. exactly. Oh, I'm my getting, God. Am I getting a few of these when I leave? Well, do, this is actually... Now that you say that, I always I bought these at uh, Home de- uh, Office Depot, mm-hmm. just because uh, as a kid I remember going to Office Depot and I saw that you could actually buy these, and so yes. I would just get into all the football games for free because I just give them to people because it's like it's just a, I have thousands of tickets, <laughs> and you can use them for 
They sell only three different colors, pretty much. So if you have three rolls of these tickets they sell at Office Depot or Staples, chances are any com community event you're going to go do, you're going to be in. You're, you're in for free, baby. Wow. I don't think it's even illegal. Like, what are you going to be like? Right. Oh, you bought tickets? Like, I what? did buy the ticket. You what? did buy the ticket roll. There's no. I didn't sign anything that says I can't come in here without paying. No, true. There's no like you know. This isn't Six Flags or something like that. Yeah. So. You a big football guy? Did you used to go to the football games? I used to uh, for for the social aspect. But yes. I got into football this past during the pandemic. I got into the into NFL. Interesting. Okay. And fun. Ryder and I were just arguing about football before he got here because I was saying that. That football is the most interesting sport, mm. and he's saying that I'm going to get into soccer, and I'm like, it's not because soccer is inherently boring and not as like, it's not as complicated as football. Yeah. yeah. And I won. I think I sort of won that argument. Oh, I think I could kind of introduce a lot something of, new, which is I I think basketball is much more interesting than any of those. A lot of people say this. A lot of people have been trying to get me into basketball. I think I would I would enjoy going to a baseball game or a football game because there's something about the outdoor energy yeah. that's fun. But for actually watching the sport. Don't you have a tough time seeing the guys in football and kind of knowing mean? knowing who's who? Whereas basketball, I feel like it's very clear who everyone is and whose yeah, team everyone's on. But and there's the football guys, they got numbers. They got and numbers. They also have their name on the jersey. Pretty big, yeah. And they also have, uh, there's only one side, there's only offense on the field at one time, so you know you only got like 12 guys right. to pick from. And the quarterback's the guy. <laughs> Maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. It's like they're shifting and like people are coming. Yeah. Basketball's like, here we are. We're playing you. Basketball is great in that sense. It's so simple. Switches every time. You never have to get too bored. Yeah, but I think that's my issue with it is it's so Back and simple forth. that also sometimes uh, basketball games are so close. It almost always comes down to that last quarter. It makes me think like if it always is that close, Why don't we just shouldn't you be trying more during mm -hmm. the game? Like just get some, build some points up. Like yeah. take the lead. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think it's uh, it doesn't make any sense to me. Like, hockey makes sense because it's so hard to score a goal. Right, hockey. But basketball, it's so easy to score a goal. You think you could kind of like. But then every it's so easy for everyone. You got the greatest on both teams. Yeah. So really, you're it, that really is a game of missing. You're right. It's more just right. about like who Can't. we're probably all going to get all of these, and then a couple people are going to miss, and then that's all that matters. That's all that matters. Yeah. Did you uh, you like basketball the most? When I was growing up, I watched basketball a lot. I really loved it. Like pro basketball? Yeah, Celtics. Or college. Celtics. The Celtics. No. Yeah. Isn't there another team down there? Is it no. like the Rhode Island Hatmen or something like it that? It probably or? is. Yeah, there's probably the <laughs> Rhode Island yeah. Haberdashers. Yeah, the Haberdashers <laughs> are probably out there, but we yeah, no, no. Are we, you a Giants fan? No. Pats. Pats. So we just kind of went all like, yeah. But when you did that thing for the Giants, that was just like a Yeah, I did something did you, for the Giants. I, I swear that? to God. I did something for the Giants, and I, I called my cousin beforehand. I said, <laughs> "I said, can I do this? Is this okay? Is this okay? As as part of my family, am I dishonoring the family because by doing like, this? Hey, what the fuck is I, it, eh? I, yeah, yeah. Uh, what are you? I can't do it. I can't do the Boston. They can't do the Boston. I can't yeah, do sure it. you can. I can if I spent like the next two days watching. You know, Good sure. Will Hunting or something. Maybe I could uh, do it. But speaking of, I just watched the Instigators. Me too. Just I watched it. I loved them. it. I thought fun. it was uh, fun. Yeah, That's it's kind of those guys are playing around. Yeah, they're playing. Give them a couple hundred mil. Let them play. That's how I felt. I felt oh, it's nice to just see the boy. The one for them. They're playing. The they're boys are fun. playing. Yeah. Casey, I liked it. Casey and Matt. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of improv going on. You know that those you know boys that Matt's, are riffing. Matt's being like <laughs> doing that thing that he does when he's trying not to laugh. The Matt yeah. Damon like. Yes. God, God, I love you comedians. Yeah. <laughs> <You> guys, <laughs> <laughs> Can we keep that? Can we keep that? Oh, my God. I love that. God. That was so funny. Say that again to me. Say that again Have to me. Have you ever worked with him? No. Oh. But I feel like, you know, I probably could. I, could, <laughs> I could. I would probably be okay. I would be relaxed. I would know that Matt would want to chop wanna it up. He'd want to chop. Yeah, yeah. He'd he's... want to be... He seems like, honestly, he seems like the greatest of He guys. does. He does. He seems, he's like probably up there of yeah. Yeah, who you want to work with. But you got to be. You got to be. Right? He has to be. If he wasn't, he right. wouldn't be who he is. That, it, that is you it. You got to be. It's part of the charm of him is you're like, I know that guy. He's but my also, pal. But also, sometimes I hear about people, and I'm like, they're not the greatest. I know. You're, have you heard about that recently? Someone who you thought was probably great, and then you hear about them, you're like, oh, my God. How do, how do they not be great when yes. they seem so great. Yeah, that happens a lot, I think. I yeah. think, yeah, it's... it's Name names. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, Actually, I... I don't know if I could name a name. I, yeah, I'm trying to I think. I can name one name. 
I don't know if I could. I no, guess it's not I worth could. it. It's not worth it. I just heard about people being mean to like uh, costumers and stuff. Right, right. Yes. Because they're drunks. Okay. Because they're like, you know, mean alcoholics. That's usually part of it is some substance thing, some yeah. either withdrawal or you're drinking too much. Drinking too much or yeah, you're pissed because you're not. Right, right. And I think like, I don't know if you, I'm sure that this isn't true across the board, but don't you feel like starting in stand up and continuing to do stand up, it kind of makes. It's psychotic? It's no. psychotic, yeah. Right. But it does like, you're always one moment away from bombing. There's something about your ego that can never get yeah, too high that's true, because I no guess. matter how big you are or how great you are, like you know what it feels like for people to to eat it, to not like you in the moment, and right. like to. So I think you're maybe humbler, or you're maybe more connected to something that's uh, um, uh, merit based. Yes, or yeah, yeah, exactly. You're like, oh well, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I don't. I don't I never thought about it that way. But Generally, when I work with stand-ups, I'm always like, there's like a language. That I'm like, it doesn't matter what level people are at. It feels like right. there's just a... Because they've been more abused than most other <laughs> artists. <laughs> right. it's a, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's maybe shared not, trauma. Maybe not like uh, directly or the same type, but there's something where it's like you have to seek validation from strangers the yes. way that comedians do. Is It doesn't make any sense at all. Right. I mean, it's like the most... Um, it's just it's so it similar. also means we probably have something similar that happened in childhood oh, there's yeah. like we probably what drew us to that probably unites us and then the experience of the ups and downs or doing badly yeah you know unites us so yeah I don't really bomb so I don't know. <laughs> I've definitely bombed a lot yeah yeah what's your worst bomb god the worst one like I mean the worst one that, that was like uh, the one the, you still think about the one you go oh oh god I'm going to try to think of mine while you... The worst one, I in think... In case you ping it back my way, but no oh, pressure. No, 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 there's no pressure. I'm just taking... We've got plenty of time. I'm taking the time. I'll ping it back to you. Okay. I think the worst time... The time that hurt me the most was at the Irvine Improv. I was hosting, mm. my first time ever hosting. Mm. And um, I was early in comedy, and I was still just... I didn't know what you were supposed to do as a host. Right. Like... Uh, it's a different skill. It's a different... Yeah. Rules. Nick Vatterot was incredibly Love. nice to me. It was I was with TJ Miller and he was headlining and Nick was featuring and I was hosting. And afterwards Nick uh, was like just so f nice. He's like, just so you know, oh, when you're hosting, you gotta do dumb stuff. You gotta be like, you know, ask people if there's a birthday kind of thing. You gotta do like these dumb sort of housekeeping yes. things. And I, not knowing any of this at all, just came in full mega alternative improvising comedian weird character energy and that's what I was doing as a host oh and in, in, at the Irvine Improv so Irvine it, Improv yeah. and uh, some lady in the front row <laughs> during like a little bit of air in my set she looks me in the eyes and goes you're not funny <laughs> and I couldn't go back to Irvine for so long because I was like she looked she was like you know she was someone that was on a date with some guy and she was just looked me right in the fucking eyes and said that, and I was like, <laughs> just destroyed. Oh, to just—I can still see her face. Of course. Yeah. And for there to be almost so much silence that even like you could hear someone at room tone. Just yeah. Going, you're not funny. And not even like you suck or anything like right. that, but just you're, you're not, not funny. funny. That's like <gasps> you, you, you as a person, as a person. you intrinsically. <laughs> you, yes. It's like saying you are bad. Yes. Who you are is it's wrong. <laughs> You are wrong. Yes. You're a mistake. <laughs> You're a mistake to be around. Oh, she's still alive? <sighs> Oops. Well, someone made a mistake. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that was the, the, probably the worst, the most that affected me the most. Of course. Yeah, that probably affected me the most. But I also had, I also bombed terribly at my JFL warm-up set. Like, I bombed, like, epically bad. And what do you mean by warm up? Like you were doing like, warm up for a no, you know, you know the first night for JFL that you do like a set in front of like the this is you know ten years ago, but you do a set uh, at like a little club there. And it's in Toronto, right? No, it's in Montreal. And Montreal. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, you'd gotten JFL. I got JFL. I got Come you. Come on. This is forever ago, you know? But it's still, I, I was thinking you meant the audition part. So no, you'd already no. gotten it. Once got you it. go to JFL, go to JFL, like there's a the night before your big set, I you do see. a warm up set, and they give you some notes and stuff. And who's, like, who's there? Like the execs? Uh, there's, some, there's some execs. 
I think like Colleen McGar is there. She books Cap City or some big okay. club. And what's she, bo what's she book? Moon, Moon Tower. Moon well, Tower. now she booked. Okay. She also booked what, Velveeta Room or some shit, right? You Got know, it. She's been doing this forever. Yeah. Very. She's amazing. Uh, she knows you know knows comedy book in and out. Book them. Book them. But she really does though. She's like great. And I bombed just terribly up there at this Ugh. little club. And I remember she couldn't, didn't even know what <laughs> notes to give me because it's like, what do you do when, because I have this very bombastic, you know, sure. character-y set thing. It was so bad. We were all in the van driving back from there afterwards. And I was just making, well, we were laughing. We felt really good because I was, someone was complaining, like Sean O'Connor was complaining and Best Dunning was complaining. I was like, you guys, I bombed <laughs> so much harder than all of you. They're like, yeah, you did. You know what I mean? I, it was the insane level of bombing. And then did you do well the next night? Fucking destroyed. See, that's what like I... Like, I crushed so much harder than everybody. Because I, I think that sometimes that happens. Because, like, yeah. you go, the worst case scenario just happened. Yeah. Fuck it. And then you go up and you... Like, there's no fear. Because you're like, that was terrible. Exactly. So if it happens again, it happens again. Yeah. 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 Those are my bombs. Those are good bombs. Hi, welcome to my bombs. Hi, welcome to my bombs. With part time comedian bombs. Jimmy Pamberton. Yeah. Jimmy Pamberton. <laughs> Jimmy Pamberton. What is your worst bomb? Well, yeah, I'm trying to think too, like what affected me. But you get two. You get two. I get two. Mm -hmm. Okay. First one is first time I had come back. So, you know, dad. Well, how long have you been doing stand up? Uh, that was like Eleven? when I. Yeah, but Eleven years? I feel I've gone in and out. I feel like I'm not really actively doing it these days. But yes, I would say my first time doing stand-up was about 11 years ago. Okay. And I had come back from my dad dying and was like not a good enough comic to be like immediately like how, turning that into laughs. How long after? Days. Oh, well, sick, shit. Sick, sick, sick. So it was, like, day, yeah. it was like a sickness. I had like come back in, maybe not yeah. days, even call it a month, but it was like the first time I'd landed back in New York after this happened. Mm -hmm. And you know those shows that like um, aren't really shows, what are they called? Assault shows, not assault shows, oh, but uh, like... Uh, surprise. surprise by comedy. Surprise by comedy is a nice way to put it. I feel like New it's York, like, we it's had like a, a different... barbecue restaurant yeah, or you, someone's like saying, I was like... What the fuck? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we called it something else, but I'm forgetting. But yeah, something something uh, where it's just like yeah, you're aggressively like takeover. It's like your takeover take hot. Yeah. So yeah. I and hostage it was comedy. So I just remember I was it was way high up. I think it was in Harlem, so I had to be on the train for a while. Right. I'd gotten up there. It was a small like spaghetti restaurant. Seven people dining. And they oh. put, oh my God, they put me like first or second. And I was so unable to do any of my old material that I was at this point just kind of screaming about my dad. Yeah. And I rem all I remember is saying something like, and he was in a coma for seven days. And looking over at this like beautiful elderly couple sharing a pasta dinner, kind of looking at me like you've, You've ruined our night, maybe one of our last dates. You know, you're. Uh, mm -hmm. we came here to forget, mm -hmm. and now you're reminding us. And I got on the train, and I just remember the train ride being like 45 minutes, and I said, like, well, I can't ever do stand-up How again. long did you not do it? Until Probably a day. <laughs> okay, a day. <laughs> no, no, not a day, but yeah. what I did was I started switching that material I would do at like a black box. I was like, I can't do that material. At yeah. A, oh, that's a, that's, so I started splitting that's it up. Smart. Yeah. Cause I was like, it took me a long time to realize that to realize like, Oh, you can't do everything everywhere. Exactly. Yeah. Cause Jesus especially Christ, with that funny. material, it was like, I found it was very important that people knew how much I loved my dad before they could laugh at it. And so when I was only doing a five minute set, you're you kind of, you, you can't, can't explain it. It's not possible. So then there's no like, time for the backstory. Exactly. Yeah. And then they're looking at you like, what? Ooh, this is over sharing. And bad. You're yeah. oversharing. And, I mean, also, I was oversharing. So it was a, um, so that changed how I did comedy, where I was like, okay, I can never do that type of a show yeah. again. I also don't like that type of a show. I don't like doing a show where people didn't sign up for it. That feels no, crazy. No, it's the worst That's ever. That's not good. Why are we doing that? I've even done shows recently where I get there, I'm thinking, why the fuck did you think I want to do this? <laughs> like, exactly. Uh, uh, because, like, you know, how long do you have to do something before... People, do, it's it's like a weird. They don't realize they're being insulting. Yes. God, or they think how. like, well, you'll just say no if you don't if you don't want to. But yeah, you but just how do I know? Exactly. I don't know until I get there, 
And uh, God, I think it was one. T- uh, I think I maybe did leave a show once because I was like, I don't want to do this. I did see someone years ago. I started doing comedy in L.A. kind of mostly at this place called The Big Fish. It's not really there anymore. Mm. It's still there, but it's called a different name. But it used to be like this locals-only bar Fun. in Glendale. And I remember seeing a pretty big comedian come in who my friend Doug asked to come to the show. And she showed up, and she was just like, yeah, um, no. Uh, she's right. You she's know? right. She's, it's called self-respect. Exactly. Yeah, I think that that is great and I also think that that's part of like why I even don't love stand-up I don't like like I like doing stand-up when I have a show I have something to say and I'm inviting people and then they're coming to see that show yeah I I, I don't miss or I don't love the feeling of like you're here you don't know me and then you're going to decide whether you like me based on what because I'm like I I like me I like what I'm doing if it's not for you that's fine but I don't like that in stand-up you kind of have to you are for them. So if they don't like you, you kind of have to... You got to sh- pander. You got to pander. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. But, but it, yeah. Um, okay, my second bomb. Philadelphia, doing my solo show. There's a part where I lie down on the ground, and my dad is in a coma at that point. Also, I literally just said I decided I would never do that again. And then when I was running my special, I got... My whole tour was in comedy clubs, so I was kind of in this situation a lot. But it's interesting to do it in clubs. I know. I that's think that's like a it's kind of antithetical to some of that. Definitely, material. definitely. Yeah. And like I would have like bachelorette parties, and then you're kind. Oh. I mean, just so I just remember Philadelphia snowing. All these people came out. Eleven o'clock show or ten, whatever it was, the late show. Everyone was like hammered. There was someone smoking a cigarette in the front row, and I just heard, like one of the staff uh. came over and said like you can't smoke a cigarette, and they were like, I'm gonna, and they were like. You know what I mean? Like, that was the vibe. That is the most Philadelphia thing I've ever heard in my life. I know. Philadelphia is... It was nuts. (sighs) They were rowdy. I mean, it was the rowdiest crowd. I'm gonna. I'm I'm gonna. And then they're like... I'm gonna. And... I'm gonna. (laughs) All right, I tried. Well, I'm gonna. (laughs) I'm gonna. I'm gonna front row. You're smoking a cigarette. Uh, It's 2000, yeah, 22. Oh, my God. That was 2022? Yeah. This is I'm like, gonna. Yeah, I'm That's gonna. so okay. fucking Philly. So Philly. Philly has Philly's a time capsule. It is. It, it yeah. It, Jeez, it was the oldest city, but still like, yeah, we haven't changed from when we were starting. Exactly. That was definitely. It was very Boston vibes. Where it was just like, well, yeah, we're rowdy. We don't. Yeah. Yeah. You don't. You don't know our thing. Yeah. We're pieces of shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this kind of feels hey. familiar, but yeah. How do yeah. how do we how do we as Philadelphians differ from New Yorkers? Well. <laughs> we're sort of like uh, pieces of shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sort of, hey, oh, okay. And the rent's thing. cheaper. Okay, yeah. 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 Whereas one person might have a limp in New York, we have a limp, and we have a missing arm, <laughs> and we're smoking in the drugstore. It's like, yeah, so yeah. That's the show. Person smoking in the fucking front smoking row. Smoking the front row. Rowdy, rowdy. Some of my beginning set had some like distractions so I could kind of was it was the show billed as like uh just you or was it billed as it was billed as the show but I still think a lot of people don't even look at that they see my face and they're like oh I think I've seen her do like that's a thing too my comedy was very like either I'm doing this dark show or you've seen me do like crazy characters so I think a lot of people would come being like oh she's I know her she does the wacky characters and then I was like my father passed away so anyway whatever usually I feel like I could get them and that was Part of the rewarding experience was it was like you get people who you would never do this show to be like, oh. They love it. Or they at least are like, oh, that made me think of my father. Right, yeah, because everyone has. Everyone's got someone. Everyone's that, got a father. Everyone's got a father. Everyone's got someone they've lost. So that was that was nice. And But yeah, I so I'm down on the ground and it goes super quiet and all the lights go off. And I'm How counting. far in the show is it? It's like. Three quarters of the way. Okay. Or maybe so halfway. Maybe halfway through the show. So it's been going good so far? It's been going pretty good. But again, in the beginning, I have a lot of like sex jokes. Kind of like some stuff to be like, hey, we're cool. We're cool. Yeah. We're cool. Poof, here we are. I got mm-hmm. you. Now you got to listen. That, that was kind of my vibe. Right. Um, and it was a very fun. I liked doing that turn. That was a very thrilling thing to be able yeah, to do the cool. turn. It's fun. Yeah. Um, and so I count down the seconds of my dad. I, da- days. But I go like one, two, three up to seven about how many days he was in a coma and I had to be at like number three someone in the audience just went what the fuck and you know like if it were 
a normal stand up set, I would like have addressed it, but at that point, I was on the ground. I couldn't from the ground be like, hey, come on, I'm doing a show here. Like it was, it, so I just kind of had to let it roll off and, um, and yeah, that was that. That was that. Yeah. And you kept going and the rest yeah, of the show was good? I just kind of kept going. It was fine. I don't really remember. I just I feel like, yeah, a lot of times once that happens, you kind of go to the third rail where you're just yeah. like, I'm out. I'm clocked out. I'm doing it. But I'm, I am I am going to dissociate a little bit. You know about the Colin Quinn bombing, right? Tell me. The, the, it's, I mean, you have to listen to it. I think he does like a NPR story about it, something like that. He got asked to do Robert De Niro's birthday party, like oh. a, private, a private event. No. And he said it was... You have to say yes. It's Robert oh, De yeah, Niro, yeah. Like, of course. But he said it was just, you know, he go, he's Colin Quinn, so sure. he's just the most uh, incredibly descriptive story ever. Absolute, pure, and total hell bomb. <laughs> no, all these celebrities, like yes. gorgeous celebrities. <gasps> yeah. I mean, I always think about that because there's no, there's no greater bomb. There's it's, no greater it's, bomb. In my mind, it's the greatest bomb because I think he's so funny. Totally. And so interesting that like if he can bomb that bad, then it's just we're all we're all dead. We're right. all walking dead. All right. And there's something where you're bombing. Like usually, you know, I go, well, I'm never going to see these people in Philly mm-hmm. again. You go, oh, my God, I'm bombing around every person I've ever wanted yeah. to work with or have worked with. It's like bombing at the office party. I did bomb the, one of the first times I ever did stand up, which was opening. Sure. Which is doing actually the first time pretty much I ever did stand up where I was doing a uh, warm up like mm-hmm. a literal warm up for this web talk show and it was so bad I remember <laughs> everyone afterwards not making eye contact with me yeah oh you but can feel it that's what happens you become like you're like ooh this person is nasty <laughs> They have this nasty like stuff. You don't even exactly. It's like when you yeah, pass a mattress on the street, you don't want to get a bed bug jumping yeah. on you. You kind of you turn your whole body. They won't even look at me because they. It was so bad. It yes. was just terrible. Yes. God, I've never. And I think Dana Gould was there too. I don't think he remembers it. So wait, did you just stand up before you were on Superstore, or was it in the reverse? Oh yeah. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. But not like I don't know. I did yeah, a good amount of stand up before that. Okay, okay. I think so. God, I'm trying to remember. I, yeah. Probably, yeah, I definitely did. Okay, yeah. okay. I think I did Montreal before I did Superstore. You did what? I think I did Montreal even oh, oh, before, before then. Th- I think yeah. so. Yeah, that makes sense. God. I mean. Yeah, I did. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Because acting, there's more freedom there because you can play, you can riff, but then it's like you're, yeah. you, there's a lot of other, it's kind of like soccer or whatever. There's soccer. Ooh. Shout out. He's, he's editing. Yeah, he's editing. Yeah. Now. We just put, had a soccer reference. Soccer reference. <laughs> but yeah, it's like there's more, there's more defense before just goalie yeah. it's like there's a lot of, it's like yeah you can play you can riff but then you got a director you got an editor you got a lot of things in right, place everyone also, everyone's trying to make you look good yeah and we're all trying to make each other look mm-hmm. good there's a real collective like we all do better if we all do better whereas yeah. a comedy club they don't really care if there's they no give a shit they don't give a shit they're just and sometimes they're just oh i'm gonna i'm drunk i'm a bad person yep. i'm gonna go yeah to this place where uh it's kind of okay to be shitty exactly you can you can ride the shitty line a bit yeah yeah. And uh, sometimes you get kicked out, but if you get kicked out, you're like, fuck yeah. Exactly. I'm going to go to fucking Charlie Deacon's and uh, drink a bunch of Sam Adams. And, and you're telling know. me you can't do the Boston accent. Yeah, Look at that right there. Is that there. Boston? That's sure. not Boston. Whatever. I did just watch the instigators, and I watched yeah. the instigators, and I'm watching my buddy Matt talk to, talk to fucking... Uh, Who's your buddy Matt? Matt Damon. Oh, my Matt Damon. Matt. Sorry. My I thought Because there's a Matt in the comedy scene who's, who's from, who's from Seekonk, Mass. And I thought oh, really? Who's there? Um, why am I forgetting hey, who, his yeah, last name? Who the fuck's Matt. that? Huh? Yeah, who the fuck's hey, that? Why hey, am I forgetting? Oh, I'm forgetting about? his last name. Matt. Honestly, now that we're saying it, I might. Matty, who gives a fuck? Because I don't know. I'm honestly, hey, there's a real chance I've, I've, even, that his name is not even Matt. Have you seen The Departed? Okay, that means yes. How have I seen The Departed? I was sort of more times than, more times than I have a real like. I've I can't watch so any times. scary movies. I can't like watch horror? any horror or. Really? I, I, I don't. Ever? Yeah, no. I, I don't. What if you got asked to do a horror movie? I'm gladly, I've done one. Okay, okay. But Did you watch the movie? Yeah, but then I know, I know what oh, went down. You know everything. Yeah. I know everything. Right. But um, I don't really watch violent movies. Or but if there's a Boston accent, I will watch it. I will yeah. watch it. I love anything that has to do with the mob. Me too. I mean, what is it? Why do we like it so much? Right. It's. I think. Yeah, personally, it's just there's a homey sense. There's a sense it's of... Comforting it's comforting in this weird way. Like, these people, love they, they, they got each other's back so much. It's so, so simple. It's so simple. We love yeah, each other. It's very we'll simple. kill you if, if you mess with us. There, needs, like, there need to be nice. more mob movies. 
I know. I think there. I think there could be more I agree. of them. I think, I, and even even the ins, I, I, there's not enough. I was like, I will like if if it takes place in Boston, if it's up, I will watch it. I yeah, don't I'll care. watch. I, will I don't watch care. it. I watch. I get uh, what I what my wife calls grandpa baiting, where you watch a movie that seems like it's going to be good, and you're about twenty minutes in, like, oh, this is fucking trash. Yeah. All because it has a few good actors mm-hmm. in it. When you just got tricked into got watching tricked. this shitty movie that they made in ten days, yep, and they got like a couple of decent people in there, but it's just a fucking piece of shit. Yes, but if it was about gangsters, like Chicago, Boston, any, any Irish, any Italian, yeah, I'll I'm watch in. it. I wonder if there's something where it's like it's almost like an episode of TV. Like we already know the world, so you can just pop back. There in. you go. It's not new because a movie. There's so much new. You have to get on board with everything. A mob movie. You go. I probably know what's. The general vibe. The town. I know. Yeah, the t- love the town. Ooh. Oh, I love the town. Seen it many times. Me too. The town. Goodwill Hunting. God. Departed. I watch kind of. Those yeah. are my what about comfort uh, movies. You know, Goodfellas. Love Goodfellas, but I do feel like that's the second genre of like that feels maybe more like New York, New Jersey okay. mob. So I still like the. I mean, how can you not? What about the? What about um, Donnie Brasco? Do I know that? Yeah, you do. Donnie Brasco? It's uh, Johnny Depp. It's Al Pacino. I think it might be Brian De Palma movie. There's a chance I haven't seen it. Oh, it's good. All right, I got to watch. Donnie Brasco is good. Donnie Brasco. It's pretty great. I think it's pretty great. Pacino's good in it. Okay. He's really good in it. What about, have you seen Serpico? No. This might go down a bad path. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, might. This this, this is, yeah. I mean, these are all mob movies. I guess they're more Italian. That's, that's the thing. more Boston. Because it's, Cause it's I'm more like, New York, I'm New Jersey, right, yeah. Which I still love, but yeah, if it's like I in the... I there is a... Dist- what else is a Boston one, then? I is mean... Heat? Heat's not one, is it? No, but what a movie. Yeah. You know the Heat Diner, is because it's kind of close to where I live? It's the where they shot it. It's like under construction, and it hasn't been a diner. I'm like... Is what? it Dinah's? Huh? Is it di- what diner is it? I don't know. It's 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 done. It's kaputs. It, is this in? It's on Wilshire. And I'm like, if that were open, oh. I'd go. Uh, who wouldn't go? Yeah, but it's probably some weirdo who owns it. Who's you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. Once I want a thousand dollars a day from you know some yeah, bullshit. Yeah, yeah. I love a diner. I love. I want more yeah. diners in L.A. That's probably where that comes from. Oh, but there's so many. There's a bunch of really good ones around here. That's the thing. There's some real good ones. Yeah, this this area feels like maybe it's got a little bit more. Yeah, because it's old. It's like the old kind of like. Yes. You ever been to Talleyrand? No. I almost don't want to say it on the podcast. Because you're, you, yeah, that's Talleyrand is fucking mm. good. It's like, oh, we're in a different city. Yes. It feels yes. like a different time completely. Yes. We had a waitress there the other day who was, you know when you get a waitress who's over 55? Heaven. And you're like, she's oh calling my you sweetheart. She's God. oh my God. Yep. Fuddy duddy kept forgetting stuff. Oh. You want to top off? Or, well, not the accent, yeah. but yeah, that vibe. Yeah, yeah, it's the best, the ultimate, the career server. Oh, nothing beats a good career server. No. Ugh. Or like a really good steakhouse server. Mm. That's when I, I'm like, ah, oh, I'm relaxed. Yes. Like, sell me. Just fucking sell me. Yeah. Do your thing. <laughs> yes. Do your thing that you get well paid for. You're a fucking genius. Yes. Yes. See, I don't need steak, but I, I get the vibe. I, I feel. Diner. Whoa, whoa. You don't need steak? No. Nah. Oh. Come on. Yeah, that's okay. I get yeah. it. Yeah. But you have eaten steak. Back in the day. But yeah, I've been a vegan for like, I want to say over a decade. Damn. That's crazy. You're like yeah. an early adopter. I'm an early adopter. Yeah. yeah. How'd you get into it? I was vegetarian. I always kind of got a little grossed up by me. Went vegetarian. Yeah, a lot of people are that way. Yeah. That's when I went to college, I was like, no, I can make my own rules. Right. And then dad got sick, cancer, looked up some stuff. Yeah. He started being vegan. We made vegan no, foods. That's a real thing. And then yeah, I just kind of stuck with it. Because it's bad. I mean, who knows? I think everything's bad. I think like we don't really know. It feels like yeah. everything might be bad. So I'm not sure. It's like yeah. drinking is literal poison. Don't, don't you feel like there's been a movement lately about Hardcore how about drinking's it. really bad? And I'm like, are we about to be the generation that like cigarettes were for our grandparents? I don't were think like, so. I don't think like, so. Is it really bad? Are we going to look back and be like, we used to, people, no, people used to drink all the time. All the time. Yeah, I think it's different because cigarettes are relatively new, if you think about it. Alcohol True. is alcohol is the reason we have civilization. <laughs> it's literally the reason because you can clean water with alcohol. It's like yeah, it's, it's it's so I think it's like that thing. Also, uh, I think the thing with um, alcohol is we all know it's kind of poison because we all feel so bad the next day. Right. Obviously, this thing is not good for you. Right. But you, you're collectively being, hey, 
We all like this. Po- let's, have, let's go be poisoned together. Together. That's why it's so sad when someone drinks alone because it's like, oh, they're, po- they're so Poison. sad they're poisoning themselves alone. Yes, yes. It's one thing to go out with people and like, oh, we're all, all going to do this bad thing. Yes. And it's fun because you're, I, I think, I've been thinking about this a lot lately because I've been trying to cut back on drinking yes. significantly and I have. But also, I really like drinking. I, know. I enjoy a lot of the aspects of it and everything. But it's the thing where I, I think I've sort of realized that the thing about drinking that is so compelling is the social aspect of it. And the reason it's social is the the group poisoning. It's the thing you're where right. we know it's bad, and that's why it's fun. Totally. Because it's kind of like, you know when someone doesn't drink? Not when someone's... Uh, when someone's never drank, when, I don't get when someone's like, I don't drink anymore because I was too good at it, you know? Yeah, yeah. But when someone's like, I've never, never no. drank, you're kind of like, I don't trust you. To- well, I, I feel that way with coffee too. When people are like, no, don't drink coffee, don't eat it, never have. That's weird to me too, yeah. yeah. What do you, what do you, wh- how? It's like it's the best tasting the thing that exists. the best part of my day. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah, well, the drinking thing, it's kind of, yeah, you're right. It's like poison. It's a collective. Like ice cream. Like, you don't really want to get ice cream on your own because there's something about, like, let's get sick together. Yeah, let's, let's get, get let's sick. have too much dairy. It's like the perfect combination of fat and sugar. Exactly. That tells your brain, like, okay, eat as much of this as possible yes. because you're going to not, might not get it again. Exactly. Like, eat, eat all of it. Yes. Because you might be, you might be dying soon. You ever done the Vermonter? What the hell is that? I don't know if they still do it, but all I remember is in high school, me and my friends got the Vermonter, and it's basically like at Ben and Jerry's kind of a trough. More or less, they hand you a trough of ice cream. Right. And if you can finish it, you get it for free, and I'm, I'm pretty sure we all threw up. It's, is it, it's horrible. Wait, but is it, uh, how many people can, can eat it? Right. I don't know what they the logistics, rule, they must right? have some rules. But I don't even know if we, we were more in it for just like... That's how I also remember a time when we ordered pizzas and we just paired up in teams of two to see who could eat the pizza the fastest. It's like That's when people cool. say like phones are are bad, I'm like, I don't know how bad they are. We were doing crazy shit because we didn't have much entertainment. Yeah, Eating. I think that stuff's better than I think that's the pro. That's what I think is bad with the phones is we're not doing that stuff anymore. Yeah, but how great was it? It was fucking awesome. Yeah, it was the greatest, the greatest ever. Yeah, like oh, nothing will ever be better than the. Then, or are um, we just getting old? Are we just are we becoming old and we're like, yeah, nothing. I we. think it's both, right? Yeah. We are getting old, and also, it's that thing where like, um, there's so much nostalgia for a, yeah. a time in the past that uh, there wasn't like a ton of awareness, and you had to. I know. If you went someplace, you were just at that place. Uh, you're at that place, and maybe someone could call. Like once in a while, you ever had that thing where you were someplace at like a, a store or like a restaurant. And someone gets a call there because someone knows that person's yes. there. That that is so cool because that means like oh it must be important. Totally. If or it's someone who goes to this place so much, you know that they're going to be there. Be you there. can call like, like tell Billy to come home. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, it's so simple, right? Yeah. No, that's true. That is true. And like, mm-hmm. I feel like this isn't my own thought. Someone said this, but like with cell phones, you also know like, you you know when you're getting calls and when you're getting emails and messages and yeah. you also know like when you're not, you know? Whereas like back when we were kids, if you like went out or if you went to your friend's house, like you didn't uh, know if you weren't getting mess. Yeah. Like, so there's, so you're not, you're, yeah, you're hyper present because you're just there with that person. You're really not thinking about what is or isn't coming in right. on your phone. And that is what I think is hard to find. Is like, how do you get hyper? How do you get that hyper present back? Because it can't be good to be happy. I don't know if you can, place. right? I know. I, I want to. And that might be why we drink because it's like there's yeah. a feeling of when you drink. Oh my God, yeah. All of us are drinking together that it's like for a moment we're kind of more. Yeah, but there's got to be. We're more mortal. More yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Which, like, hiking can, like, there's certain things that can match that. Like, for me, if playing a board game still does right. it. If I'm, like, really in it on a board game, yeah. that's, like, I feel, or pickleball. There's, like, no, we're you just describing hobbies. But, yeah. I, I, I want to get into pickleball. Pickle. I think I would love it. It's so fun. It seems so. I remember watching a lot of people, when I was in New York for a little bit, living there, I was by the Brooklyn pickleball courts, and I'd watch people and just think, God, this looks so fucking fun. But I never had the balls to be like, hey, can I, can I, can I try? Can, well, that's the thing. There's like a slight learning curve of the, yeah. but once you know them, then you can hop in any game. Right. But I was playing with my friend the other day and we were just like having a blast. And afterwards we were like, maybe we're not 
the, like maybe we just need to be playing pickleball all the time. I think so. Like it was a thing of like, oh yeah, a lot of problems get magnified when you're on your own or on your oh, phone. Oh my or God. Like all of us in this place are playing pickleball and we're having fun. Yeah. And we're fine. It's fine. Yeah, there's this there's this book I always think about. This guy, Sebastian Younger, wrote this book, Tribe. Mm. And he talks about how, I don't know, like 50, 60, 70 years ago or even even at all beyond in human history, you would never be alone. Yes. You'd almost always be with someone. If you were alone, it was for a very specific purpose. Yes. And maybe as part of some sort of weird ritual thing or right. you were in trouble. Yeah. You'd almost never be. My phone's fucking doing something right now as we're saying that. <laughs> yeah. It's like you would never be alone. So it's like a thing where. Totally. You know. That's, yeah, that's it. It's like, and we're, we're alone a lot of the I know, time. Too much. See, especially in our career, too, because there's, we're not going into an office. We're not quite, yeah. there's a lot of alone time. So I think that's a good reminder. Like, try to make plan. Like, we shouldn't be this but you've alone. been doing that. You've been making a lot of movies and stuff, right? Like, like yeah. different things. And you that's. Have, like a film coming out or like a, what is it? I saw something that you were Knives. Playing. Yeah, what is it? Yeah, so that's, that's been very helpful. Is like, yeah, me and. My friends Emily Renee and Andrew Darty have mm-hmm. a little production company, and we make what's it called? T- Table for Three Films, T forty three, and yeah, that is a nice way around the isolation. Is like we can, we always just know we can something. just make something. Our goal is always making like that knives we made for very cheap. Right, we just get friends together. How long is it? It's like ten minutes. Okay. Yeah, but um, I think it helps because we can make stuff so often. And for so cheap, there's less pressure to. It's not like this has to be. The yeah, thing. you can just make it. Because that, yeah, knives is very silly and playful. It's about but two desperate knife saleswomen, you know, really? and I'm, yeah, who are door to door knife, yeah, Cutco oh door to door knife saleswomen who That's just funny. gotta get a sale, and they, they, probably can't. How and do you? Can you watch it yet? Yeah. Is it, it on? It's on YouTube. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's in my link. Link in the bio. At Alyssa Limp. Um, but yeah, I think that that kind of thing, like even on that day on set I do remember thinking this is so playful and so fun and joyful yeah in the moment it's uh it's just the ultimate thing yeah all the other things you are worried about like, oh that doesn't really matter right and I do think we have the luxury of like if it does well great and if it doesn't no one's like out no one's like ah, but I put all my life savings in that and right. that really makes it a lot more well, playful because yeah. it's like whatever lose that line drop that line improvise like let's do this it doesn't like, we were supposed to shoot at night, I remember, and then it started raining, and then we just flipped the entire script to be like, okay, they stay. It's not night. It's not night. They stay overnight, and they do it in the morning, and then yeah. we do it in the morning. And I'm like, oh, if this were a really intense film set, that probably would have been like, we just lost, like, yeah. you know, a million dollars by having to move it. And it's like, yeah, it's fine. We'll do it in the morning. All right. That's so cool. Yeah. You get about to make another one, you think? Yeah, we already made another one. Damn. That we're editing. That's the thing. take you? I mean, we're... Right now, we kind of do every aspect of it, so it can take a little while with the so editing. So you write, you guys all write everything. You all it depends. Direct, so like, kinda, it's it kind of like it kind of splits. Like Andrew's an excellent DP, mm-hmm. so he always is DP. He's shooting it. Emily is an amazing director. She's always directing, and then right. any one of us, I'm always acting, and then right. any one of us write, and we kind of take That's turns. So, so cool. sometimes we write together or separate. And who edits it? And then usually Emily or Andrew, and then I usually just sit there and help, yeah. but I don't. Editing's that's a skill. That's a real skill. Yeah, I love editing, you know, jump cut videos and stuff, but once you're editing yeah. with, like, real film and footage, it's I'm, different. it's different. But, yeah. yeah, our next one is about a friend coming over to visit her friend after she tried committing suicide. Mm. So we also get to, like, play with one is wacky and crazy, yeah. and then the next one gets to be intense, and that helps us try things out, too. So then we go, oh, we like this one better or this one, and, yeah. How long have you been doing the? Um, how long have you been ma- making these these? Uh, well, we movies? met working at Condé Nast years ago, making shorts in New York City. In New York City, at the at the was, World Trade Center building. Yeah, okay. yeah. I've been yeah. down there one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Oculus, walking through the Oculus every day. Um, it's where Bon Appetit was. Yeah, exactly. I worked yeah. for that. We were all kind of in the same right. pool, and we worked at this place called The Scene. But our job was just to make a ton of videos for a low budget all the time. So we got oh, really used cool. to working together. And then when we all moved to L.A., we were mm-hmm. like, let's do this, but for shorts. So probably for three years we've been doing That's it. Awesome. How many have you done? I think five. Let's see. One. That's cool. Two. Three. Four. 
three, four, five. Yeah, five. five. Man. And you can make them for like nothing, right? Yeah, we can you make them for nothing because we kind of do it yeah. every aspect. We usually work with friends. We just really try to make it fun. And we kind of do that model of like use what you have. So we haven't yet rented right. out another plate. We just ask friends for their places or we use our own places. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, it's like that's the that's the aspect of tech. Of tech <laughs> that's the aspect of technology that's good. Is you have like we're talking about the bad oh, side true. of it, but then you have this other side of it where it's you you can you, you even can, ten years ago you couldn't do no, that. No, exactly. Mm -hmm. And like like I always feel like sure the goal is like to uh, make to to make art and make money. Right. And it's like really nice that. I feel I have control of making art. So it's like, I would yeah. love to make art for m more money, right. but if I can't, I can always just make art. And I feel that's really freeing versus if you're in this space where you're like, if I can't make art for money, I can't make art. Then you're really dependent on someone yeah. else. That puts a lot of pressure on like every audition or everything. Oh my God, yeah. And then you feel like, oh, I'm not getting to do my lifeblood, this thing I love. And that's that sucks. So I feel like I'm always in the mode of like, I want to be able to always make art, whether it's... And that also takes yeah. the pressure off everything else, yes. too, because you're already in the thing. Yes. So it's like that thing where, you know, you're doing what you want to do as opposed to wanting to do something. And waiting for something. It's like, I, yeah. sure, I'm always waiting, waiting to grow. Waiting for permission exactly. or like uh, acceptance or hiring, all that crap like yes. that. Yes. Yeah. I want to be hired. I want to make things at a bigger scale, more things. I want to be on set all the time. But like, yeah. if I can't during a certain year... I still can make art right. that I love. And yeah, so I think that that's been a, a real gift. It's such a good idea, too. Yeah. It's like, oh man, everyone should do that. Totally. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm also quite fortunate to have Emily and Andrew as partners because they're so skilled at that's all so the cool. elements that really are. I, you know, my, obviously before this, I was just making videos on an iPhone, so it's not quite as. But still, even the iPhone even that, stuff, it's crazy it's how much people, how much you can do in those. On the iPhone. Totally. Like, I use CapCut now. You know yeah, you can just... CapCuts. Like, this is as good as any editing program yes. you have to pay money for maybe even five or six years ago. Totally. It's weird. No, it's weird, and, but it's also, yeah, it's, it's, it is freeing. So I do think I always go back to that of like, okay, what do I want to make next? What do I want to explore next? And yeah, it's nice to have... What are you going to do next, talent. you know? I think we're angling to make a feature. I think we'd love to make a feature. Um, we're just waiting for... Hell Yeah if we feel we have the idea that we're all jazzed about. Um, but, you know, the thing, we have you, a lot of scripts in the pipeline, so we might just Would you crowdfund it, maybe? Maybe. Like a little, just get a maybe little just bit. just a, a little, little bit. bit money. Yeah. yeah, have you ever crowdfunded? Not personally, no. No, I haven't either. But I, I've done, been a part of things that were. True, same. I don't know, some about that is, I don't know. I always, uh, I don't know, I, I, I'm unreasonably scared of it. Yeah, I think I am, too. I mm -hmm. think I am, too. Um, so I think, but but there's no reason I guess to be scared. I mean, there's it's there for a reason. So maybe we right. would maybe we would do that. I don't know. But we've always, I think our first approach would be to try to make a feature with like what we have and yeah. see how how we can do it. But but yeah, who knows? Maybe twenty grand you could probably do it. Oh yeah, twenty grand you can do a lot with twenty grand. You can do a lot like. with twenty grand, and then between three people you're going okay. That's however much. Right. Each of us. That's one. Job. Yeah. So. So yeah, I think that that's two million. That's a lot too. You can do two, get two million bucks. Yeah, if we get to crowdfund for two, two million, million, we get if we, um, get, we get Matt Damon on board. We all of a sudden, yeah. Damon will probably bring in an extra five. Five. So now we're at seven. You can but do a lot to, with he's seven. He's gonna take a lot. So you got so seven. Now we're back to five if he takes two. Yeah, he's gonna take but two. Now you got Damon. So all of a sudden, maybe. You maybe know, get more. Maybe, maybe get Ben. Ben comes on board. You now you got ben. the two of them. Duncan comes on board to sponsor. Now we're up to oh, twenty mil. What about uh, Casey? Casey comes in, mm -hmm. and now. Casey says, you know, I'll do this. But you know, if you can get Casey, you might be able to get Joaquin. <laughs> and then we get Joaquin. And then you can get Rooney. And then we're getting Rooney. And then you can get, if you get, you know, if you get Rooney, what you get? The New York Giants. And now we're doing the New York Giants. And I have already done work for the New York Giants. That's what I'm so saying. It's See, I know. I, wrap, I wrapped it, it up. You wrapped it up just like that. The Mara so, family. You get them in there, they're going to crowdfund. It's going to be a crowd so I'm really Mara. excited for that film coming out next year. 300 mil. 300 mil. It's, it's by wonky. It's, it's got some mob in it. It's DeVito's in it. DeVito's in it because I did the commercial with him. I'm in the Jersey Mike spot with him. I call him back. Yeah. I say, hey, man, maybe Jersey Mike's comes in. Now we got a cross promo Ooh. of Duncan and Jersey. 
Duncan. Uh, see, when you, when you said Duncan, I didn't think about. I thought it was a person's name. I didn't know, but you meant Duncan. I meant Duncan Donuts. Donuts. Cause anytime Matt and Ben are doing something, they're in. Oh, they are, aren't they? They're coming in. And is then, Duncan like as as a silent producer for all of Matt and Ben's work? I just saw that they did an ad for the Instigator, so I think they're they're picking up the phone. Did you see that Super Bowl? You seen the Super Course, Bowl ads? The Some of the Super Bowl ads, I was I was baffled. Yeah. At but, how. But, you go, Matt and Ben, you, there's... It's Matt and Ben. It's Matt and Ben, yeah, fine. Uh, uh, yeah. You had, like, the grandpa thing. That's me with Matt and Ben. They can do anything, and I'll go, yeah, I'll watch it. I'll love it. That's great. Yeah, I mean, I will watch anything Matt and Ben do. Yeah, I'll watch so. everything Ben does. I'm a big oh, Jason so you're more Ma- you're more Ben than Matt. I think I'm kind of a bigger Ben guy You're a bigger Matt. Ben guy. I, you know I like Matt? You mm. know why I like, like Ben? Because mm. Ben is, is fundamentally sort of a broken man. Yes, he's got the comic in him. He's, he's got, got the comedy he's guy. He's broken. He's, he's got broken. problems. He's, yep. He, uh, and he brings it to his character. Like, I, always, I think in the town, oh. when he's honest with her, he's like, you want to tell you? Four trucks, four trucks, three stores. There you go. I told you. You know that part when he's honest? Yes. He does it in Argo. Listen, this is what happened. Uh, I, I did this and did this and you know I don't remember what he says, but he's, he has that moment where he says, "Okay, I'm being honest now. You still want to work with me?" Yes. And they're always like, "Wow, he, you're so he honest." He disarmed me with his honesty. Uh, uh, we're in. We're in. <laughs> I'm in. Uh, I love you. Yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah. you're honest with me. You're so honest with me. I and will you're run still away here. You. Yeah. I'm in. Yeah. Where Matt's more of like, um, he's really good. He's, he's like good, so good yes. at what he does. Yeah, it's true. And he's like laughing at the this guy's uh, fucking. <laughs> this guy's funny. <laughs> you know what it is? It's like with Matt, with with Ben, you feel like. You're one of us. You're a comic. Right. You, with with Matt, you're like, you're my dad. <laughs> and, yeah. and I and I think having both of them, you go, uh, we're all here. But Family's all here. Who would you be more scared to work with? I, I'm not kidding when I tell you I I I think I would be so ex- I don't know if I'd be scared to work with them because I I'd just be like. But which one? If which you one would be more scared? Yeah, which one would be more scared to work with? As I know my answer right away. Yeah, I mean, I think you go Matt because. Whoa. You go Ben. Yeah. No, because Ben, I go. We're both just, you know, we're we're, yeah, we're. Hmm. You're you're messed up. I'm messed up. We'll figure it out. Matt, yeah. I go. He's he's gonna be, he's gonna be here. See, I'm fi- thinking like Matt. Yeah. Matt is all by the book. So he'll and I'm the messed ba- up one. So, so he'll have your back. Matt's the guy who's like, uh, man, this guy's fucking funny. <laughs> you hear what this guy? You hear what this guy just said? Did you just hear what this guy just said? We were roll, we were rolling on that. Where if you do it to Ben, Ben's like. This guy thinks he's funny. You know what I mean? <laughs> I see what you mean. I see so what you mean. It's a little okay, bit of yeah. competition with Matt. It's like, I'm not Matt. You're Matt. I see. But I'm I'm a, I'm an idiot. I'm dumb. I'm stupid. I'm a piece of shit. I but see. Ben is a little bit more, uh, yeah. He's I feel competing like for the funny guy with you. So then all of a sudden, I just, see. There's just something where I'll be a little more nervous because he seems more uh, moody, kind of like, um, but also that's not sort of true. Do you hear the story the Walsh brothers have about auditioning for no. them for the town? No, it's tell a great me. story. It's like one of the greatest stories I've ever heard in my life. Mm. It's a long, fifteen-minute story oh, okay, that they okay. tell. But in essence of it, uh, David goes in there after, after um, Chris auditions, and Chris like I don't know they're they're not, they're kind of glib with them, they're they're curt with him, and then David goes in and he just like gives it to Ben. He's like, "Who the fuck do you think you are? You dumb? No, no, no! Don't interrupt me. I'm talking to you. You." St- you come in here, you think you're from the town. You're not from the fucking town. You don't. And they love it. They're on the fucking floor being like, because, you know, they love these people from Boston who right. are just, I don't give a, f- oh, you, oh, you're from, ben- who gives a fuck who you, you know what I mean? That's totally. Sort of like, I don't give a fuck who you are. They love it. And so, I mean, that's also in him too. It's right. that thing where you just love the authenticity. But I don't, I'm not like an auth- authenticity. I'm not an authentic Bostonian Rebel rouser, so yeah, I think I, that's what I think. I, I really feel like if I saw them, I'd just be like, Hey guys, yeah, you know, they feel like, um, but that's probably what's their charm too. Is they, they're such an everyman. Would you like, call one of them the F word ever? <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> he's trying to get a clip, he's trying to get Honestly, a clip. Honestly, he's trying to get me. If you I won't, I won't, that's how I won't you get be fooled. Him. That's, that's how you get him right at the end of the interview. He try. I'm comfortable, I've had my bubbly. He tries to go in, no, uh uh-uh. uh, but would you? <laughs> no! let's, let's say you're in private, you're in private. And see these red. This is him. He's this is the Johnny is the red right. Let's say you're in pri- <laughs> let's say you're in private with Matt and Ben. You guys are chopping it up. You had a couple beers, and uh, Matt says something stupid that you and Ben are both like that's stupid. You say like, look at this f word. Oh my god! Do you realize that you would go down? He they would be like, we can't love you enough. <laughs> Here's money. 
I bet that would they would just. Would, fucking, I'd get an overall deal with them. You think? Honestly, I think they would. I'm like, why are you giving an overall deal? I'm like, well. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I think so. No. I think so. No, 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 no. I'd go. Oh my god, I couldn't do it because it's different if a guy does it. Yeah, it's, it's different. Yeah, because it's, it's like me. It's like you. What? But if you did it, they would just be like, I can't fucking believe her. <laughs> Those yeah. are the guys you do that with. Those yeah, are the well, guys. No, I would just, yeah. I know you wouldn't, but yeah. I, I want you to. Well, thank you. I would, I would want to be able to see this thing happening. Maybe I'll write the movie, and that's what's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you hire my production no. company. You come to me. Yeah, with exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll get the Maras involved, maybe. If we, yeah. 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 Get, get Duncan in. Get Duncan in. Yeah. Duncan. See, I can't say it again. Duncan. Dun Duncan. Donkeys. Duncan. Yeah. Donkeys. We're going to Dunkin' Donuts. That's what do you call the little donuts? Munchkins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're getting some munchkins. So they're called midgets. Oh, hey, 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 this guy. No, What's I would, I would be a. I'm a very, um, I'm the Boston local who's really politically correct. Hey, come on. Hey, we're not doing that anymore. No, we're not saying that. That's a character. That's a character. Do you have that character? No. Maybe there soon. You go. I think Look at that. that. See, this is why we're tribes. We're not supposed to be alone. We're coming yeah, exactly. with together. Spitballing. Spitballing. Generating, uh, generating mild streams of income. Yes. For, yeah, yes. For Duncan. For Duncan. For to steal it. Yeah. Cut to Duncan telling us to take this whole thing down. The <laughs> movies, any given Sunday. <laughs> yeah. I always want to do that. I always want to be like, yeah. All right. Uh, the candle company's called Big Time Candles. <laughs> Listen to them, Paris. We'll we see love you next it. Time. We love it. And the movie's called. It was called Crazy Time, Big Life. <laughs> we love it. Listen to Paris. Thank Check her out. Thank you so much for having me. Got the album. Here it is. And Here it is. Just, and then the music plays and it they is. sort of just start laughing. Here it is. The catalog. It's uh, 32 Bar Blues. Listen to <laughs> Paris. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Mm -hmm. Music comes up. Music comes up.